flip side tactics versus the leftovers. You're defending RLCS world champions about to take to the pitch. Let's go over to the commentary desk with Wave Punk and Shogun. Take it away, guys. Thanks so much, Axel Taz. You know, Shogun, I was looking at our caster pick em this morning, and I was yeah. talking to Carpet, and I was like, is Leftovers playing today? Because when I looked at it, nobody had picked Leftovers to win anything today. And then they beat Northern Gaming, and now I don't know what to think about anything. I don't have a clue what to think about anything when it comes to EU at mm -mm. all right now. Kaunos started off the day just showing everyone up, just going, yeah, we can do this all. Mm -hmm. Leftovers coming in, beating Northern Gaming. Mm -hmm. Almost always been set as the top two team obliterating that mm -hmm. common conception. This right Penta? here. Penta. Is Penta hard. looked good. It's it's so hard to keep up with everything right now. If you are new joining our scene, you are joining us at its most chaotic point ever, and I hope you're enjoying it because this right here, mm -hmm. so far, easily still the best RLCS we've ever had, and we've just got started. Yeah, absolutely. These games have been so close. They've been so dynamic. We were talking earlier about we don't know what goals to pick for top five because there's so many every day. And now we are going to get to see the reigning world champions in action for the first time in season play. How are they going to perform against this leftover squad who came out of nowhere? These guys, as their name implies, completely ran, just kind of came together onto the team because they were they were people who just just left off of other rosters and they're like all right let's 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 try let's see what happens when we play together and so and it's working right now we have Farah the my, my my favorite best friend and he's a girl i think is the meme right now yeah, so uh yeah these guys it's it's crazy yeah, it certainly is. I mean, Snasky and Siki, they've been around for ages. The desk definitely went over. I mean, Siki, as they said, he's been around for ages. He's achieved so much and never really received the plaudits mm -hmm. really deserved for mm -hmm. it. Snasky, it was around for quite a while. He's done a lot of stuff. He was around last season as a part of Reunited. Yep. And they went really far, didn't quite reach land though. This is a team that has the potential, and if any, the last game's anything to go by, they can go a long, long way. They certainly can. You, you bring it up like Snasky had barely missed out two seasons in a row on Supersonic Avengers, then reunited. They came so close with his buddies. And then we saw Siki, who's made it to both lands, has placed well in these lands, but has never been able to make it all the way through. He's been one of those players, kind of like Pashi, who shows up with like different teammates every year, but always does well with those teammates. And so these two guys, experienced veterans of the RLCS, but then there is Farah coming in new, and he's been wowing everybody. Yeah, really, Farah is the one that a lot of people did not expect to know about as he came into this one, but he has been phenomenal. And going back to Siki, before RLCS really started, Stocky used to be the player mm -hmm. in Europe that everyone thought was the most adaptable player. Mm -hmm. Siki has proven it throughout the last year and a bit. He is by far Europe's most adaptable player after being on all of these rosters and achieving all that he has. Just a cape. He used to be such a defensive player when he used to be part on a team with Pashi, the one that went mm -hmm. on to win the RLC Pro League. Yes. Ended up changing it over and he is consistently changing his style, reinventing what he does, and always successful. Yeah, it's, it's fun because he and Pashi were together for so long, and then drama happens at the beginning of last season. It almost becomes this like Rocket League Civil War thing between the two of them. I cannot wait to see that rivalry continue later on here in the season. But these players, everything here on the pitch right now is they're going to try and get their first wins here in the RLCS Season League. Leftovers actually going for their second win here as they've just taken the win off of Northern Gaming. The upset nobody expected. You could not ask for a more a more kind of birth by fire into RLCS than having to go up against Northern Gaming and Flipside on your first weekend. But they're doing it right here and they're going to see if they can take the two game win. Yes, certainly. I mean, Northern Gaming and Flipside Tactics easily picked out to be the two most difficult teams to play against. They can take wins here, and that almost certainly sets them up for those playoff positions. Not only that, but they've got easier weeks ahead of them. Absolutely. Getting the wins here, just getting these out of the way, even if you don't get the wins, is very good for this leftover squad. Who you see in the orange, flip side in the blue. Game number one set to go here on DFH in a quiet first 30 seconds as Cooks are kind of creating a nice shooting opportunity, but not capitalized on, and now it is leftovers up on offense as Snasky flies through the air. Two Batmobiles on the pitch here as Cooks are and and Snasky both driving that flat cereal box car. And Farrah will pass. Siki will pass to Farah. Now Marky off the backboard, bouncing out towards Greasy, who takes a shot shut down by Snasky, who picks up ball control and basically passes straight to Cookser. I think he was expecting a teammate to be there, but that'll put Flipside back up on the offense. And you'll see Snasky clear it out, going down the sideline. As Greasy moves up. 
Be the shot from Markey, that quick pass, excellent shot placement from Markey, flip sides on the board. Yeah, you saw from G2 yesterday just how quickly passing plays can be done. Greasy gets a hold of that one, and Siki just is not in position for it. Markey, that is the earliest he can possibly shoot that and still mm. be capable of hitting the target. Well played by them. Absolutely. Pre premium shooting there from Markey. 347 left on the clock in game number one, and Flipside leads by one point. Snazky's touch will loft it in the air. Farah circles in midfield, not sure whether he wants to go back or forward. He's going to choose to go forward as Siki drops a nice one, but Cookser will block it before a shot materializes. Snazky putting it back up. Farah behind him. Well, using Snasky as a screen to try and get in, but not able to put the shot on target. Leftovers now. An extended opportunity to score. They'll get the midfield defense from Snasky and keep it going. Greasy Meister up to Markey. Solid passing from flip side as Cookser will shoot. Siki will clear it over into the side. Snasky is waiting. Markey will get it off of the top. We fair over to the side. Right now, we're seeing the leftovers trying to pass out of their own half, but Markey just going to shut them down once again. 2-0 flip side. This is premium flip side right here. This is exactly what they always try and do. Markey Duda is always ready and waiting. He is the shark of EU, ready for any passing play. He's got two of them already, just because space opens up, and he is the quickest player to get to them all the time. Absolutely. Both, both Markey and Cookser, people that like to prowl at the midfield, you know, if Markey mixes it, misses it, Cookser is waiting there. Such a deadly one-two punch. The flip side packs right now. Cookser misses that one in the air. It'll be Greasy in the back who passes it out into the middle. Markey needs to get there. He's not in time. Snasky's able to capitalize. Yeah, Greasy, do not pass that in front of your own net, my friend. Just takes this one straight out, and you're looking at this. Marky Duda has to race Snasky, and Snasky, I don't know if you saw him at land. He is built. He definitely was going to get there first. <laughs> he, he's, he's quite the jacked athlete. He, he started, he's running on his treadmill. It made his Batmobile go faster. Now Farah in the air off of kickoff, striking very, very quickly here, deep into flip side territory. It'll be Marky passing it off the wall to himself. He gets the, like, oh my goodness, Marky has a hat trick. Half game hat trick from Marky Dula. Doesn't need any setup from this one at all. Just launches it because no rotation coming in just yet from the leftovers, too close to being after the kickoff. And speaking of kicking off, they'll be kicking themselves for not sorting that one out and putting themselves two goals behind. Yeah, not how you want to play, especially up against flip side. Don't want to give them the easy ones. Seeking to move downfield, Greasy takes it away. That's two players out of rotation right now for the leftovers. Greasy's shot will be blocked away by Snasky, but Cooks are going to look to see if he can set it up for Markey here. Siki picks it up, passes to Farah in the midfield, trying to get it past Markey into the corner. Takes the boost, and Snasky will move up to take over. A nice setup. Markey will be able to block it down, but he passes it straight back in the direction of Snasky. And Farrell will be able to send it onto the backboard. Nobody there. Greasy's up. Excellent touch from Greasy. Siki was right in position to slam that one home if he didn't have it. The leftover still looking to close this, this lead. They're down by two with 150 left to go. Yeah, and you'll see from flip side as they continue to play just how different their rotation is to other teams. Not necessarily leaving someone in defense, although it does allow these sort of opportunities to open up. They just the like to take up the areas rather than focusing on where the ball could go. They'd like to focus on where they know it would go. Mera is lurking in the middle. He'll move in to take over as his teammates are low on boost. Snasky will go down this entire right side line. It'll be Siki who picks up ball control. Nice read by Cookser to drop it to Mark. He passes back to Greasy. Open net if he could take the shot. Shut down by Siki. Now it'll be Snasky trying to intercept Markey. He passes to Cookser, who takes a shot towards the net. Will it go in? No, blocked away by Farah. But the Greasy Meister is in the air. It gets saved again, but Markey in. Can oh. Snasky get it one more time? Over to Farah and out. Well done by the leftovers, holding on in a scary situation. Yeah, they're certainly holding on, but they need to get this out of their own half. They got so many pressure situations oh, coming through. Wow. Greasy! Okay, you do not try and fight Greasy. The way the Snasky's like, he's, he, he might be built, but. Greasy just muscles this one past him and just takes the easy shot. He just has to get the ball to the net. Snasky was the only thing in the way. Got it past him, puts it in for one flip side. Look, you can be as built as you want to, but when you try and wrestle someone as greasy oh, as that's, Greasy came man, in there, I are, he's always going to slip away. I didn't even think about that. That's a really good point. That's also a very awful imagery. How is how is real life affecting this game so much right now? Jeez. Siki so going to try and move this one up. Snasky going to go over and pick it up. They've got 38 seconds to score three times. This is a nice setup here, but Greasy Meister will take it away. Gets in the air, into the corner, past Siki. Fair will play it out. Now Marky in the air as well to take another shot. 
Snasky will shoot away. Cooks her onto the side wall. Nice pass out to Markey, the excellent shot, but it goes wide. The passing plays, the offense of Flipside on point today. Which is slightly, a slight bit more accuracy on the pass shots, and the, the score would be so much higher. This Leftovers has not found a way to shut them down at all. This game will end. Will it go in? They will get one more, but it's kind of just a consolation goal at this point as Flipside did everything in this game. Yeah, just putting that one into their own net. Cux, unhappy with the fact that he hasn't managed to get on the scoreboard at all throughout this game, decides to put it into his own <laughs> net. And uh, that is a very impressive win there from Flipside Tactics. Not necessarily pulling out anything too flashy, but that rotation from them was on point all game. Oh, nice nice attempt there, Greasy. He tried to do the Cooks or Wiggle, but just kind of flopped on the side. Didn't, didn't manage to get it there. But he did everything he needed to on offense, setting up two of Markey's goals, getting one of his own eight shots from Flipside, holding the leftovers to just two. This team we just saw take and beat Northern Gaming in five games. And now here in game one, Flipside is saying, no, remember, we're the world champions. There's a reason Northern Gaming came in third. Yes, certainly indeed. Flipside Tactics, great and exactly what they needed to do. Remember, leftovers coming into this game with lots of momentum. They've got mm -hmm. me feeling on top of the world right now. And then you get this yes. coming against you. Flipside Tactics not only going for the win there, but offensively dominating the mm -hmm. entirety of the game, keeping it in their opponent's half. How do you really deal with that? You've got to try and find a way of playing it out either individually because those long clearances just means someone like Cux or Mark, you're going to pick up the ball again and just go, all right, we're going back. <laughs> yeah, we're going, we're going back that way. And you, and you look at the scoreboard and the quiet player on the, this flip side player on this flip side team was was Cookser, considered probably the best player of last year, the, the player of the year. And, and when, when that's what you have waiting to fill out, to, 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 to kind of to, to, to wake up, when that, that beast is lurking in its lair, it's like, oh, dear. That's the, they haven't even reached their final form yet. Certainly have not. Flip side tactics. Obviously have got lots in the tank, but leftovers, they have been through wars already today. And I think they'll happily drag Flipside into the mud and see if who can battle it out. We'll see. Will the, will the veteran champions be able to continue this dominant performance? Or will the new upstart be able to work off of their recent victory? That did include two losses. Snasky with a nice shot over the top of Cookser there. Marky will clear it away. What? What? Does this yes. pinch off the wall? Yep, that certainly is from Siki, especially when you get speed like 120 kilometers per hour. See Siki catching it just on the half volley on the wall. Lots of power from that sort of shot and exactly the perfect way of them starting this game off. I saw the clear and I was like, right, that's going to that's gonna roll up the wall. I'm going to look back and see what the def how the defense is rotating and then the ball was in the goal. Fake kickoff. They're going to try. Can they pull it off? Cookser to Marky. Pass onto the backboard. Leftovers not sure how to deal with it. Cookser does not make contact. And that'll see the leftovers moving back on offense. Marky just wants to buy time here, and Cookser will play off the backboard once more over the top of the shooters and Greasy. Oh, if he had made contact there. Been about the quickest counter play we'd ever seen. Snasky and Sicky now moving down the field. So he's going to try and drop this one to Snasky, but interrupted by Cookser. Marky to pass and Greasy to follow up. It's that one, two, three plays that gives Flipside those quick transitions and the ability to score very quickly. Yeah, both these teams like to try and play the ball out wide with a pass and then fling it back into a dangerous situation where someone can come and go for the shot. So Snap. far, Flipside doing better out of those two teams, though. They are playing like world champs. Right now, down by one, though, with 3.52 left to go. Off of the quick plays. The, the boomer of a shot from Siki. Greasy will send that into the corner. He'll wait this one out. Challenge, go for the second touch, wins it and gives it to Cookser. Sends it flying all the way down the field. The goalie should be able to get it. That was Siki who was in net, gets the save. But this is still an offensive opportunity for Flipside. Cleared away well by Snasky. Greasy Meister looks to intercept in the corner and push it back out. Yeah, but once again, we just see Cuxa. He seems to have taken a more of a relaxed role in this sort of game. Exact same thing as Siki's doing. Mm -hmm. As we see him at the back here, just both these teams realizing that the pace has slowed down. Long more, more long balls are coming in. Might as well have someone who's very good at making plays start get a hold of that ball. It was a beautiful shot from Greasy. Fortunate for the leftovers, the Pharaoh was positioned as he was. Now we will see Snasky clear it away. Marky and Snasky both missing. As is customary, when one player misses. Marky will now leave that one for Greasy. Takes the shot, a nice fake, but Siki reads it from a mile away. Gets the save. Save your medal for Siki here about halfway through game number two. As the leftovers look to tie up the series, they hold on to that one goal lead right now. 
Both these, both these teams taking their time, not willing to overcommit to anything. And that's certainly working out well. We can see players like Farah sat down the other half of the field. They know that these are becoming a long shot sort of game. Get that redirect ready to go. It's, it's, we're seeing the leftovers almost running sort of a 1-2 offense, leaving Farah very deep in enemy territory and letting Siki and Snasky rotate kind of in a doubles formation in the back and just leave him up there for cherry picking. It's really kind of fun to watch, especially because they have the lead right now. See if they can hold on to it. 2.09 left to go before the end of regulation. And Cooks are caught in dead man zone. will fall back, let Greasy push that out. Snasky will pass it over the top. Sick of getting demoed in the back. That'll force Farah to fall back, and he does end up in the corner. Cooks are with the drop. Does it go in? No, Sicky gets the clear. Excellent plays there by Sicky. Yeah, but here's the dangerous part. Once Flipside start keeping it pressured consistently in the other half. That is when they can get something going. But, oh, that's a miss oh. there. Marky still has it set up. Fair has to get there. He does, as Marky was not able to send it on target. Cooks are up to Greasy. Greasy will let that one go. Cooks will move up. Batmobile v Batmobile. Snasky wins that out past Cookser, but Marky picking it up. Sicky past Marky. And now Cookser, last man on defense. Pass it to Marky on the side. He'll move up, put it onto the backboard. 115 left to go. Still the 1 0 lead for the leftovers as they hold on. Cooks are with a strong shot. What a shot from Cooks and a great pass from Greasy to tie it up. Yeah, Cooks hit the perfect part of that Batmobile car. And every single time you see the ball come out towards this middle area just in front of the goal, be afraid of flip side tactics. That's where they got the majority of their goals during the first game. That's where they picked up their first goal in this game. Very dangerous. And it's all tied up here with 112 left to go. Farah winning out that kickoff. Will he get punished? No. Greasy gets back from picking up boost on the side. And they will be able to survive that scary moment. Oh, that's so important, that demo. It spins him back onto the defense. Cooksers miss won't be as big of a deal there, but Marky able to get there. They did get the demo onto Greasy, but they weren't really able to clear it out of their own half. This is good for flip side and rough for the leftovers as we are in the final minute. Tied up at one apiece. Cooks are with a shot. Can Marky finish it so close? Cooks are with a second shot. It almost goes in, but Snasky saves it. Here comes Greasy with the follow-up. They keep this offense going. Two players up again. Snasky and Siki have committed both times on the last two shots. Snasky will finally get the clear, but with 30 seconds left, you don't want to let Flipside have those opportunities. Oh, what Cooks. a pass from, Gre from Cooks, sir. Greasy takes the shot, and Siki shuts it down again. The defense from leftovers holding on strong, keeping them alive in this game, too. Ah, oh, Siki only got the clearance medal for that one. He deserves that double savior. No, the he, game has not given it to him. Oh, what a great series we're having here. Fantastic two teams. That pass from Cookser was Just incredible. Floating. Greasy got it onto the backboard once more. Siki won't get all that strong of a touch off it, but it's enough to get it to Snasky. You expect Flipside to probably let this one touch. As Greasy will put it over the side, probably play for overtime. They might keep it going. Greasy will play it all the way down, then it'll touch. There we go. And we get overtime, game two. Certainly seems like Flipside Tactics have had the better chances in offense, but this has been pretty even so far. This can go either way, depending on who can play this on the floor. I feel like both these teams are better off on the floor than playing it in the air. Oh, beautiful rotations from Flipside as Marky goes in to take a shot blocked away by Snasky. Defensive leftovers on point. This game is far with a nice pass. The shot not on target from Siki, but Cooks are with an opportunity. Snasky will send it over to the side. Shut down the breakaway opportunity for Flipside. Marky looking to pass to Greasy. Does not make contact in the air. And that'll actually see two Flipside players in the corner. Cooks are needs to make contact and give Greasy time to refill on boost. He can set up on defense. It's bottom enough time to get around. Greasy will push out. Now Siki on the backboard goes for the demo play. Instead of the double tap, Snasky with the shot. Can Greasy get there? An excellent save from the Greasy Meister. And Siki will shoot over to the side. Cooks there. Marky getting tangled up in net. Uncharacteristic miscommunication from these flipside squad. But Cooks will drop it back into his corner. First minute of overtime come and gone. Yeah, flipside tactics. You actually saw there how important demos are because it can ruin a rotation. That's a shot on target. Snasky, Snasky. gets the block. Staying alive. A savior medal for Snasky as well. So many saves from this leftover squad right now. So they are holding this game alive. We've seen many overtimes that have become such strong defensive games today. Yeah, and you can also see from overtimes that once they get to this point, they can start to linger on and on as teams don't want to be the one to make the mistake. Mm-hmm. We'll come down with Sprout. I love these defensive overtimes, though, because it usually does come down to a strong offensive play, not just the mistake. And right now, it's going to be the question of who is going to be able to get that strong shot. Probably an upper 90 shot is what it will take to win this match here. Siki takes the shot onto the backboard. Farah's up to shoot. 
but does not get it through Greasy. As we approach two minutes of overtime, still both teams struggling to find the back of the net of their opponent. Yep, yeah, as you see here, oh, Cooks has actually been bumped in the background. Snasky's open. Can he make the shot? Greasy shutting him down, knocking it down. Fire with an opportunity, but Cookser plays it away. Save your medals galore. I feel like they're about as common as save medals right now. These players, so many attempts on the net, so many shots, I'm sure. As these players are able to keep this game going at one apiece. 2.20 left to go. Marky with a shot at midfield. Quite the nice redirect. And let Greasy take another one. It bounces into the middle. Marky has the opportunity to keep this alive. Where is Cookser? He's been in the back. Should be lurking at midfield. Here he comes. He's going to back off as he sees that the leftovers have ball control. But that's two players up for the defense. This is bad for the flip side. Oh, they're able to put it in. Greasy gets it. Bad for the leftovers, as I meant, as we're seeing flip side get the win. Yep, two players going for that. You called that exactly correct. You cannot do that at all. Snasky left in no man's land. He can only hope that he jumps into the ball and gets himself a lucky save. Not going to happen when you've got very accurate shooters coming out who belong on flip side tactics. And there we go. Man, and you wouldn't know by the score margin right now of two games to none on the side of flip side that this has been such a close series, especially this game was beautiful to watch on both sides. So many saves with 12 shots from flip side. What is this, nine shots? No, I can't do math. 11 shots from the leftovers here as both these teams playing so strong. I mean, so that was, that was at a total of 23 shots for three goals. Such the defensive game. Yeah, very defensive game there from both teams. However, the important thing for Flipside is that they got the win. We mm -hmm. saw during the LAN how important overtimes can end up being, especially the longer ones. We saw a ridiculously long one between themselves and Mocket. We did. And that, I feel like, was the one that was the killing blow towards Mocket. After trying so hard to try and claw themselves back, getting beat after your best possible opportunity, completely killed them off. Do the leftovers feel the same way here? Is 2-0 too much for them to come over? Mm -hmm. We're going to find out. Yeah, I remember something. It was either in a pregame interview of the finals or maybe his 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 interview and kind of the little mock it bit. But they were talking to Patch about, like, what is he most afraid of? What does he want to avoid? And he was like a 10-minute overtime. Yes. And he basically got that. there, and, and it was kind of the nail in the coffin for, for mock it aces as Flipside was able to take the win there with the bracket reset nonetheless. As Flipside playing so strong. There, that endurance, I mean, it is, it is situations like the one we just saw where it really really pays off to be world champs. It pays off to be in your third season of RLCS, not your first. These guys are, know how to get through the nitty gritty and through the hard games like that one. Yeah, certainly is. They've been together for a very long time now. This is the most successful roster still going because every other roster, they switch. No mm -hmm. one is happy to settle for second or third. They all want to be number one. How yes. do you become number one? You beat number one. And they do say it is easier to chase than it is to be at the top. Oh, for sure. Flip side? They like the top of the mountain. Yeah, <laughs> they they have they have mounted Mount Cronovia and they've just planted their flag and they're sitting and having a picnic right now. They're like, yes, come come if you like, but we live here right now. Thank you. In game number three, if the leftovers drop this one here, they will be swept by Flipside Tactics, the defending world champs, defending their title and style at the moment. So far, it's been the leftovers on the offense here. An opportunity for Farah, but cleared away by Greasy. Snasky and Sicky need to hightail it down. Is it going in so close? A good play by Sicky to keep that one away and stall out the shot from Markey. Give Snasky time to put it into the corner. And look at that. They just look at Flipside just giving them space. Immediately, we saw leftovers regain ball control. As we see Flipside just going for the hard clears at the moment. Yeah, Flipside Tactics is very good at noticing passing plays and cutting them out during the pass rather than allowing the pass to complete yes. and trying to go for a block shot because that is a much more difficult thing to do. We see many, many teams that if you're able to get consistently multiple touches on the ball in a row, that's when you become very deadly on the offense. So like you said, intercepting those passes is very critical. Well, Flipside Tactics, they're not a team that plays reactionary. They know how these things go. We see a lot of the teams, especially when we saw Radiance play yesterday, very reactionary. They want to see how the play turns out, and then they want to try and stop it. Snasky with the bump in the background. Unfortunately for him, shot was not on target. It was an excellent, excellent setup there from Snasky. Not able to finish that off yet, and will remain scoreless here with 3.41 left to go in game number three. Farrell will try to take a shot onto the backboard. Sets it out for Snicky. <laughs> Snicky. <laughs> Just run Snasky and Sicky together, and you get Snicky, guys. That one's sticking. That one's definitely sticking. I don't, I don't want that player. That, that sounds scary. <laughs> you get a tiny little red-headed jacked person if you get Snicky. Uh, sounds like we can sell this. Yeah, this is this is a movie in the making right here. Sicky going to try and set another one out here as Farah moves up. He'll actually fall back. Didn't like what he saw. 
With 3.14 left to go. Still scoreless here. Both teams playing well. Marking to try and pass this one out. Siki takes a shot. Cookser will pick it up, slows it down, puts it on his hood. Lafera tackles. And let Siki try to set it out again. There's Snasky in for the shot. Greasy out. Marky Duda interrupted by Fair. You can see there, Leftovers doing the same sort of thing you were talking about earlier. Interrupting the pass. Don't allow them to create those deadly shots that flip sides. Known for what a play by Snasky. Playing it underneath, reading Greasy's touch, but cleared away by Cookser. He's not just the MVP, he's not the player of the year because of his offensive prowess, but also because of just his all-around defensive awareness, just his all-around play on all sides of the field. What makes Cookser so deadly? As Greasy saves another one. The save's coming in fast and furious right now as the shots get poured on by the leftovers. Yeah, though I feel like leftovers are trying to use that backboard a little bit too much. Flipside tactics always have that one red. Maybe try and pull something else up, maybe a one-two play, something. That can work. There's no one in net for oh that Oh my one. goodness, it's and just all Cookser by himself. Just completely against the run of play though. Cookser gets a hold of it, and this is what happens when you get a little bit too trigger happy with your offense. You end up leaving the goal open. As you, that is oftentimes the, the truth. If, if you have, you've had a long extended offensive like we just saw from the leftovers. Basically the first half of the game was the leftovers on offense, and then a quick transition onto offense from flip side. They're able to take one clean shot on the net and get the lead here in game three. Could be all they need. If they are able to hold on for the next two minutes, they will have swept the leftovers. As Farrah gets a nice pinch around the edge, higher than Marky was expecting. That one going towards Greasy in the back. He'll clear to the side. He and Marky both moving out. I don't think Marky expected Greasy to move out with that touch. But he'll be back in net as Cookser clears it up the side. Fair going to try and wrap it around. Out to Snasky. Great pass. Snasky shot just a bit high. Can anybody finish? Fair will look to keep this offense going as he rides it up the wall. He'll just actually leave it for Snasky. Puts it in the corner. Try to bring this one back out. A pinch towards the far side of the goal. Lucky for the leftovers that that one wasn't on target. Nobody was in a good position to save that. And now it'll be Snasky trying to push that out, see if he can tie up this game. Yeah, flip side tactics all over this pitch right now. They're definitely making sure that they are complete on boost. They've stolen so much away mm. from this leftover squad, and that's making Plays like this very difficult for them where they are struggling to clear it away and they can't make anything of it afterwards. Oh, Cooks here with an excellent attempt at increasing the goal, increasing the, the score margin here of game number three. 55 seconds left of the clock. Farrell with an oh. excellent shot, but Cookster just blocking the opportunity, blocking that shot, getting the save, and keeping them scoreless here in game three. They're going to attempt again. Snasky going for the demos again. I like the aggression from Snasky, but it has to be followed up by accuracy from his teammates, or they're never going to be able to break this margin. And Marky Duda over the top of two, just one in the oh. back. Coast for the bump on Snasky, but the shot not fully on target. And the score margin remains at one. 28 seconds left for the leftovers to score. Yeah, but they've already done overtime. it again. Just constantly not leaving anyone back. It's just, it's very difficult to do when you've got a team against you as quick as flip side tactics. Although with all these bumps, I think we can easily now say that season three is the most physical oh, season of Farrah has a breakaway opportunity. Can he put it on target? He Ooh. does, gets it in, tie game. Okay, so we've almost got deja vu of what the first goal was Yes. Here. Too many players forward. Greasy out of boost entirely. You can see him just on the side of your screen before he went off camera. And Farrah will take that the entire way down the field. Leftovers were nine seconds away of losing this one. They're still in it. They are holding on. Gonna try and send us to overtime here. And I'd love to go back and re-watch the rotations of Flipside there and see exactly how that happened. Cooks are gonna try and do it right now in regulation. Greasy upside down shot gonna drop down overtime. Close one there in regulation. Well, here we go, Leftovers. What have you got in the tank still left after a ridiculous series against Northern Gaming? Can they bring it back out? Can they, can they finish this one in a shorter overtime than the last one ended? Fair earning himself another savior medal here. These players, so much aggression on both sides. Siki will pass that one out. Fair will take a shot downfield. Is it going to go in? Can he finish this off here? Oh. He does. We'll go to game four. Ferrer scores two goals for his team. He has put up ridiculously good stats this game, but none more important than the two goals that he is belonging to. And yet again, no one back on flip side. The counter attack comes through and the leftovers, they hang on. They hang on here by the skin of their teeth. They're going to be going to game number four here, flip side. I think it was very, very critical there that the leftovers finished that game early on. We see that these long, drawn-out overtimes oftentimes favor the veteran teams here. So flip side was able to finish that one very quickly in game number two. But here, 
Very, very quick overtime as the leftovers take the win in game three, and we'll go to game four. Yeah, and exactly saying what you were about to say there, the reason why Flipside is so dangerous during these longer overtimes is that their main weakness that has been pointed out by people over and over and over again is the rotations can sometimes get a little bit too offensive. Mm -hmm. But during a long overtime, teams sit back a little bit more. Flipside is no exception to that. They'll start thinking more defensively, and that kind of eliminates one of their biggest weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So f leftovers not taking this to overtime, or at least not having a long overtime, Definitely important for them. It means we can go to a game four. Game I, four. Do you really think they'll pick Neo Tokyo again? I'd, I'd love to see it. I That'd be love, fun. I would love to see at least a second attempt It is on a it. beautiful map. It is, like, you can say what you want about those ledges on the side. I think it's by far my favorite map as yes, far as reason, looks. I'm aesthetic. so glad that, despite the fact that they are taking it out of ranked, I'm so glad they're at least just going to try and reformat it into mm -hmm. a standard map because... You can't have art like that in a game no. and not have it displayed in front of everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous place to play. But we're going to go to Urban Central first, and we will see if they're able to pull it off here. And I uh, thought for you, I've been noticing over the past yesterday and today, it seems that most teams have A, a Batmobile player, and B, he seems to be the third rotation. He seems to be the player who's hanging back the most. Both Snasky and Cookser have been doing a lot of that this game. I've been noticing that with Pondex in the last series as well, earlier today. I don't know if there's a reason behind that particularly. You as more of a veteran player might have a better uh, uh, you know, thought about that. Or maybe uh, you've never thought about it at all. I honestly, don't know. you've kind of taken me by surprise on that one. No, I have never noticed that before at all. It might be circumstantial. I might have to speak to some of these players. Oh, oh my goodness, Siki, what was that? The angle from Siki, the zero degree shot here, just right in front of the goal, and that's leftovers on the board. Siki coming in, the Fenrir special from him. <laughs> Something we used to see a lot during the Battle Cars days, but Siki pulling it out right there. Ridiculously difficult to pull off because you've got to rotate your car midair and you've got to hit it exactly perfect. Marky Duda over on the side, flip side moving up quickly. What a pass there from Cookser straight downfield and Snasky with the read. Cookser will put it back in the midfield and Greasy was a bit farther up than the pass was ready for. And the pass was made too, I guess. Marky getting demoed in net again. This aggression from leftovers. Really excellent stuff, but Cookser over two. Can they finish it? He doesn't have the final touch, and Farrah will have to loft it. Let Siki rotate in behind him. No one in to finish it off, but what a setup there by Cookser. Yeah, Cookser just showing his teeth a little bit during that play, saying, yo, I can still oh. do this. Although these passing plays from leftovers, very good throughout this entire series, just not quite finding the finishes. Can Marky finish this off? Snasky pops it high. Cookser gets demoed in the backfield, which opens up the opens up the, the space there for the leftovers. You knew Cookser was going to be the next in after Marky's touch, but they've managed to keep this offensive going. Going. He almost falls on it. Marky keeps the pressure on and Cookser tries to backflip it in. Greasy will meet that one in the middle and kill the momentum of the ball. Keep the offensive going for flip side, but such a dangerous situation there for the leftovers. They hold on, they keep it away, and now they've got the ball down in flip side's half. Yeah, but they can definitely try and make something out of this. Flip side, just very good in that defense, though, taking their time, assessing the situation, and realizing how much time they've got available to them. And if this starts becoming a game of ping pong, look, it's like it's looking like it's going to oh be. Oh, wow, what a great goodness. Play. Okay. Nasky, okay, you, you, you yo, go for it, you yo. go for it. Ping pong does not work like that. Look You're not allowed this. to go to the other side of the field and smack it past your opponent. Great play from the leftovers. That that was that was more beautiful than like if Siki had tried to cherry pick it. He passes it back towards Snasky, then flies upfield and lets Snasky shoot it right back at him. Fair is in the midfield. That sort of counterplay when you have players up on offense from flip side, so hard to deal with. As long as Fair's shot is accurate, you are guaranteed a goal there. Well done by the leftovers as they are now up 2-0 over the reigning world champs. Yeah, and that's the type of goal that you used to see a lot during, and I'm going to give Gibbs credit here, his time on Cosmic Aftershock. Kronovi and Sad Jr., that was their bread and butter mm. coming out here in this game. Oh. And they're going to try and do it one more time, putting it in, punishing this commitment on offense from flip side. I mean, we've just gone from one of the best goals I've seen to hitting it really hard. <laughs> it, it went the whole length. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, Greasy's like, okay, yeah, right, I guess that goes in. Well, I guess that's fair. 2.50 left to go. We're not even to halftime. The Leftovers with a three-goal lead over Flipside. This series, remember this series started off with a 5-1 by Flipside. And then we had two brutal overtimes. And right now, Leftovers, I'm not, I don't want to say it too early. I don't want to curse them here, but they're looking at me. We'll just say, them. no, sorry. It's already happened. I'm so you sorry. You started the sentence. That's the start <laughs> of the voodoo curse. Snasky over to the side. It was Marky who set it up for Greasy in the middle. And that is Flipside on the board right here at around halftime. Yeah, just getting that into that danger area. Yeah, again, you see these numbers coming out when they take the shot. 127 miles or kilometers per hour. 
I'm not back in England anymore, so we're using kilometers. Yes. Just ridiculous speed. You have to try and jump for it, but unless that ball is directly at you, you're not saving it. Cooks are in the air. It's taken away from him by Snasky. So leftovers moving up. We are right here at halftime, so in theory, all the goals that have been scored could be scored again, and we could have a tie game. That's... Yeah, I think that's definitely just a theory, though. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's for sure a theory. It's, it's tech, is it technically true? Yes. Will it happen? Probably not. But Sicky going to try and set this one out to his teammate Snasky. Greasy in the back. Will pop up and just bounce it off the wall and around. Cooks are in the goal. We'll try to pass out to Greasy, who's waiting. Neither he nor Snasky got a wheel onto that one, and will leave it for Cooks in the corner. He takes the boost, slows this play down, but Fair just tackles him outright, sending it out into the middle. Sicky is in the air to take a shot towards the net, blocked away by the waiting Marky Duda. Puts it into the corner. He and Cooks will try to turn this one around. Yeah, Flipside Tactics now need to start trying to do everything here. Expect to see their rotation that is already usually quite aggressive to oh. become even more so. Oh, Snasky! And Cooks here, they managed to not only avoid the demo, but repositioned his car mid-air to get the save. And Snasky getting demoed there. We've seen so much aggression from Snasky, leading up the charge, going for the goalie. And it's surprising that I have not seen a single goal scored off of that play yet, or the play of the goal that I necessarily noticed that that was what happened. And it seems rather that the defender just sees him coming, gets the block, and gets away, but Farah in the air will be cleared away before he can make contact. But a great setup there by the leftovers as they continue to pound on the offensive pressure. Farah again in in position to take the shot, but the defensive awareness from Flipside holding on right now as they try to tie this game up. Final minute of gameplay, they need two goals. Certainly do. Stuff off this crossbar will be very difficult to deal with, but Snasky and Siki, you can see that how much leftovers want this. They sent two players to that because they just knew that they had to get contact onto that ball. Bit dangerous during most of the time, but they've got away with it. Oh, Marky Duda out to Greasy Meister. They'll put it into the corner. And Siki was have to settle for a soft touch, but a second touch will give it a bit more power. Nobody in the back right now. If Snasky can get there, it'll be Marky who gets off the wall quickly and clears it to the other side. Now Cooks are downfield. 20 seconds for the reigning world champs to tie this game up. As Siki will move that one downfield. They're going to settle for the hard clears at this point, buying time off the clock. Again, another one out to midfield by Snasky. Siki going to try and move this one upfield. Snasky hangs in the back, just try to block any sort of breakaway opportunities. But as Sik Siki's just going to let this ball yeah. die up here as the clock runs out, this game is over. Game five from the leftovers incoming here. I, I'm not going to say the I'm not going to say the words reverse sweep. Okay, don't say that. I at all. will not say those words. No, that you, won't happen. You will not. If they're part of a sentence. It doesn't quite count. However, we've now is this becoming a pattern here for leftovers? They just mm. get into a game and they just turn it into a drag-out brawl. <laughs> it's fantastic right now. Flipside Tactics, I mean, they've still got their demon around mm -hmm. the corner in the form of Mokke. Mm -hmm. yeah, they've still got to deal with a game that I don't think they anticipated to be as difficult as it currently is. Leftovers, they are on their way if they can complete one more game. If, if, if Leftovers beats Flipside Tactics after beating Northern Gaming, I, I don't... I'm... I'm so interested to see what's going to happen just with the community and with everything we talk about. This will be the talk of the town right now. For just leftovers, what, what is going on right now? Now, they are going to Game 5. We've seen so many Game 5s today, and we've seen teams push it all the way and then have, you know, Kaunos does not manage to pull it off. Northern Gaming didn't manage to pull it off. We don't, anything can happen in a Game 5 here, but leftovers looking so strong right now. I don't know what to. Who do you think is going to pull? Who's, who do you think is going to take this? If I had to ask you to give you, me a prediction right now, I'm going to look at this right now, and I say throughout this last game, look at Siki. Mm. Siki has been the top player on leftovers so far. His defense has been phenomenal. That last game didn't need to do it as much. His offense came in instead. Like I said, the most adaptable player in Rocket League. If Siki plays well, leftovers take it. If he doesn't and he has a bit more of a quieter game and he's forced to stay back a lot more, then Flipside Tactics will take it. I'm going to say leftovers, though, as my prediction. Well, let's, let's watch Siki here. And you guys heard it here. I saw his prediction. I saw his pickums earlier. You're hearing... You're hearing my pick belief. said flip sides. Yeah, exactly. Mine did too. And you are hearing Shogun believing in the leftovers right now. Team definitely who needs a new name. Something a little more intimidating than... Sponsors, get on this. Please, please, please pick up this team. They are clearly good enough. Farrell will shoot that one towards the net. Snasky in the air. He's going to be above Cooks or he drops it into the box. Oh, if Siki had been right there, that could have been a goal early on for the leftovers. But wanting to play patient, wanting to play safe. You see Snasky trying to back off, does not want to be susceptible to the breakaway. 
And he will keep this offensive going to the midfield. Cookser's pass in the middle. Oh, Marky gets bumped. That'll make his touch very soft. But Cookser not able to send it on to target just yet. First minute will come and go decently quietly here on both sides of the ball. Yeah, but Leftovers looking very nervous in the way they're playing right now. Really, if this was any other game except game five, they would have had a player on that arc down shot that we saw earlier on. Mm -hmm. But because it's game five, being more tentative, flip side tactics, they are the more experienced team. They know how to deal with pressure. Yes. If they don't try and take their chances, they are going to lose. But oh, I'll tell you what. My goodness. What the third player was way out on the left side. This is something we're seeing over and over again from Flipside Tactics. Open goals and Ferrer. We keep mentioning him for these sort of goals because he is always waiting in that mid mid part of the field. Yes. He's picking up the ball as soon as it gets to him, and he's, he's got nothing to deal with. Easiest goals in the world for Ferrer. Absolutely. The way that they're liking to run, kind of this, like we were saying earlier, like this two one or this one two, where they put Ferrer upfield, let him be very aggressive, and let Siki and Snasky hang in the back and move that one upfield and let them just work with him that way. He's so and he can recognize when that goal is wide open. Excellent plays here from the leftovers as they have the lead. Are they going to make it two? So close. Just off the crossbar. Flipside's going to thank their lucky stars. That one wasn't just a bit lower. Yeah, Flipside do need to do something about this, though. We're already a minute and a half into this game. It feels like oh. it's just come out of nowhere. And it has been all leftovers throughout this game. Cooks are going to pop this one high. Game number two that Flipside won. They tied up the game in the final minute and then won it in overtime. So you never, ever count out flip side tactics here. And Cookser and Markey both up for that. Siki had had a good shot, a good read on that bounce and had the shot. That could have been a second goal here for the leftovers. Approaching halftime and still 1-0 in their favor. Flipside gonna be looking to tie this up. Get a goal of their own right now though. Name of the game is get out of your half. There's a nice shot from Cookser that goes out. It'll be Flipside Tactics here, still on the offense, approaching halftime, so they're down by one. Yep, certainly is. Flipside Tactics now having their opportunities to go into offense, but nothing quite coming from it. They keep trying to pound balls towards the net, although this is their old school style of playing, but the times have moved on, and teams like Leftovers know how to deal with that right now. A nice pass out from Markey. Into the middle from Greasy to Greasy Meister to try and get that one off. But here they come on the offense. Leftover still trying to work this one in. See if they can get the win. It's Siki taking the shot, but Cookser blocks it away. Yep, two players went for that. It's going to mean there's no one back, but thankfully for them, their save went so far to the right and was so slow that it doesn't mean that they've got any rebound to worry about. Two minutes remaining in this matchup. Leftovers, they can do this. They can hold on and do the unthinkable. Bleeding Northern Gaming and Flipside Tactics in one week. Cookser gets demoed in the backfield. And yet, Northern Gaming still on the offense. Cookser misses that one in the air. Dangerous situation, but Greasy will clear to the side. Snasky in the air, gets there first, wins that 50-50, just beats him to the ball. Yeah, you're seeing right now leftovers. They have moved their pressure up so much. It's pretty much on the halfway line, and there's going to be a great pass there. Oh! It's going to be 2-0! Two, two it, it goes in 123 is all they've got to hold on to beat Flipside. Unbelievable, and this is coming entirely from how confident leftovers have suddenly become. That every time they're challenging, they're not waiting for the ball to come into their own half. They're challenging on the halfway line because Flipside Tactics are going for so many long balls. Every time that's happening, they're leaving themselves in either a 2v1 or a 2v2 situation at the Flipside net. This team playing like a team who has been here before, even though they have not been here before. The way these guys are synergizing and taking it to the reigning world champs right now is on par with anything we've seen in RLCS. One minute remains here for the leftovers to hold on against Flipside Tactics. Greasy Meister taking that one down the field. He's going to try and finish that one off. Flipside is not done. They are not out of this picture yet. The back pass to Markey over to Cookser. Such close aggression. They know they have to give it all they've got on the offense right now. Defense will not win them this game anymore. And Cookser trying just to keep this pressure going. It'll be Greasy trying to pass it out. 40 seconds left on the clock as Greasy keeps it in the box. And Siki will fake out. Oh. Cookser, great play by Siki. Oh. Farah mind games. Marky, Come on, Farrah, can he get it? One. He puts it to the side. Oh, what a play by Farah. Holy cow. Farah.
comes in, he sees one player in his team go for the fake, he gets enough one, and he knows Greasy wants to look for the fake, instead waits a little while, takes it to the right, 3-0, and this is not Season 3's version of Precision Z, this is Season 3's version of The Leftovers. The Leftovers are here, they are taking names, Poppin' Head's gonna take the win over Flipside, if they just hold on, 24 seconds, and the Flipside's gonna score three goals just to force overtime, I, 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 can you can we say reverse sweep now? It entirely came from that situation. It came because Flipside went so hard in the offense. They ran out of boost and they left themselves open. The leftovers with possibly one of the biggest upsets in RLCS history. The biggest for season three so far. Absolutely. The clock is dead. The game is over. It's just a matter of the ball hitting the ground and the leftovers will beat Flipside Tactics after beating Northern Gaming. A reverse sweep. These people are here to play. And we heard just to the other area of the studio, as soon as that fake came in from Farrah, mm. as soon as he put it into the net, I just heard Axel Tosco. Oh my! And it was just incredible. Everyone here looking towards this leftovers team and just saying, wow, they can, they are actually here. I think if we had been standing outside, we could have heard just kind of a global, oh man, from everybody back home or whatever, whatever you sound like when that you saw have, that play. That would have mostly been doomsday. You would have just heard just like this like rise in volume, just kind of global noise level going up just from the however many 20,000 people that just watched Farah completely dunk Greasy Meister on stream. <laughs> oh my goodness. I... I, you have anything else to say here? Well done. Well done. Well done indeed to the leftovers as they have the, the, the kickoff of a lifetime here in season three. We'll send it back over to the analyst desk because we're all out of words. Axel Toss, back to you. Thank you, Wave Punk and Shogun. I don't know what to say. Man, that tough schedule for I don't leftovers, know what to huh? Say. I, we're, I, I'm, honestly, yeah. I think I made a joke earlier <laughs> yeah. today on the broadcast. I'm like, hey, by the way, at least you're not leftovers. You asked to play Northern Gaming and Flipside Tactics. Leftovers is like, whatever, we're just gonna win. I'm pretty sure- And they did it! Pretty sure all the teams right now just wanna make sure that we don't know, we, we, we're not working. There's no point. Our predictions are just garbage. I my coin flip anyway, but yeah. my coins are even wrong today. It's mm -hmm. terrible. What was your favorite play from that, guys? Was it that uh, last one, that show that we were talking fake. about? Oh my gosh. Farah with the fake. That was disgusting. Not only the reverse Like the sweep. first fake wasn't really a fake. I think that person just missed, but the second and third were beautiful The place. full team, like I everybody know. organizing it. And, and like it's just, the world champs. Yeah, I mean, what's funny is like, if you were to just plot the trajectory of that ball, it just didn't <laughs> do anything. It just roll, here it is. Oh. Here, here we go, we got a slow-mo of it on, the, on the screen here. And fake. then beating a marquee with not a fake there. I think that was Marky, right? The last man back. Marky <laughs> thought, all right, you cannot fake me here. But instead, Farah, oh, look at this dribble. Perfect placement too, like into the corner. Looking for a pass even too, like uh, he had Siki as well available and phenomenal play. The shot heard around the world perhaps. Yeah. Uh, Farah putting an exclamation point on that reverse sweep over the defending world champions, flip side tactics. And leftovers have got to feel amazing going 2-0 over what many regard as the two top teams in the EA region, Northern Gaming and Flipside Tactics. But we do have a full reel of highlights to show you guys from that last match. Again, Flipside Tactics getting off to a hot start. Uh, going up two to zero, but leftovers bringing it back. And that was my main concern. If Flipside has a good game one, it's going to be really hard for leftovers to bounce back from that because it'll ruin their momentum from the previous series. It didn't matter at all. Game two, really long overtime, and Flipside wins it, but leftovers had control of the entire overtime. A Flipside had maybe two scoring chances the entire time, and they lost it, but they still battle all the way back. The reverse sweep, all three getting involved. Phenomenal team performance here. I mean, it's not just any reverse sweep, but there's something about having a reverse sweep against flip side tactics, a team that's not known for allowing this to happen. If they have control of a match, they have control of a match, and yeah. they usually keep it. You know, they, they're not a team to tilt, they're not a team to throw, and I just can't get over this. Uh, <laughs> I, oh. uh, there's something to be said. The world champion curse, it's a little early to call it that, but yeah. G2, uh, the season before, it didn't even make playoffs. Mm -hmm. And now, Flipside going 0-1 so far, it's still a long ways away, and we expect Flipside to not have that happen, but you never know. Complacency as the world champions might be a real thing. Uh, I'm going to do a little Twitter shout out here because um, we have a, a wonderful tweet account at RLCS that is consistently tweeting out highlights and, and awesome things that you should check out. So tweet at RLCS. Um, but earlier today, Fair, or actually in the last match, Fair did something awesome. 
RLCS mentioned Farah, but didn't tag Farah on Twitter. And Farah's like, hey, why don't you tag me next time? <laughs> So, based on that, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see that last play from Farah highlighted. Go follow him on Twitter as well. Just amazing play there from Farah. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what Leftovers has in store for us for the remainder of the season. Um, that being said, uh, we're about to go to the next match, but first, I also wanna make you guys aware of uh, the website, rlcs.gg. If you wanna keep track of standings in the tournament, Basically, everything you need to know about the RLCS is on that website. So rlcs.gg, that's your source. Any questions whatsoever about what's going on, don't ask me, though maybe I'll know. But just go to that website. It has everything that you would want to know about the RLCS. That being said, Flipside Tactics, they're not done just yet today. They're coming up next in another match. This time, they're facing off against Mocket. So a lot of Rocket League still in store for you. Two matches to go. Flipside Tactics coming up next here on twitch.tv slash Rocket League. You're watching the RLCS European League play week one. Stay tuned.